It is a huge honor for me to be in Scotland on the day they voted to pull out of the, the EU. And I'm sitting here with a um, Scottish boy born in Scotland, graduated from dental school in Scotland. And next to him is an Irishman, a Northern <laughs> Irishman who went to dental school in Scotland, who's now practicing in London. We assume he's running from the law. Um, he's lived in three countries so far. Are you? Are, well, that is the truth. Are you a fugitive? <laughs> and thanks so much for being on my show because um, <laughs> this is what you guys are on top of is is a new thing in dentistry that's not even one percent of revenue. When we look at dentistry in the United States in uh, 2015, it was they billed out about 129 billion dollars. Yeah. Not even one percent of that was Botox, derma fillers, all this stuff. So you have the Facial Aesthetic Course of Excellence. Join the aesthetic revolution, whether you're a beginner or an experienced injector looking to fine tune your skills, we invite you to join us on a journey towards excellence. Your website is faceuk.co.uk. So that's www.faceuk.co.uk. So um, tell me how you got into this. Uh, was it you're uh, your dating a girl and you just couldn't look at her anymore, so you had to <laughs> fix up her face? What happened? Yeah, well, we were listening to your story last night at dinner, actually, about, <laughs> <laughs> about um, how you got into Dental Town and how it all came about. And it was, it's a kind of similar thing for us. It was a bit of a journey. So we'd done our first course as soon as we graduated as dentists. Um, and we used to go out together to do clinics, Botox and filler clinics, not in our dental practice, but in other, other places, kind of mobile, roundabout. And we felt quite lonely. We felt quite, you know, I'd say isolated is probably isolated the word we're looking word, yeah. for here. Isolated? Like, yeah, yeah, because you're out there, you've done one weekend course, and you're exposed to do, seeing patients, and there's a lot of risk involved there. And it was really just us to look after each other, and thankfully we did have each other to keep each other right. Um, and the training is pretty poor. It's, it still remains quite poor for, for what you're doing. You're, at the end of the day, it's treatments on someone's face. So we decided that we would go out and try and do it better ourselves. I mean, in one day, one hands-on day, we learned how to provide botulinum toxin treatments, derma filler treatments, uh, and not once was it mentioned that if we placed filler in the glabella, that we could cause a blindness or a skin necrosis. These things just weren't mentioned. And for us, that was quite a big deal. We weren't taught about, you know, complication management. There was, there, was, there was nothing. It was, here's how you do it, go and do it. And then you kind of learned in reverse that that's the wrong way to do it. So let's find out the right way to do it. So we spent about a year and a half traveling the world, um, going to different courses. We were phoning up, you know, the experts in the field to shadow them. And then we took everything we learned and we put it into a Botox course and the feedback was really good. So we've done the same with filler. And the main thing which we're trying to do is we're trying to have the online academy where people can have support all the time about like Dental Town. They can, there's a forum they can post on and they've got continuing support as opposed to just a, week on, a weekend course. So. And I feel what's great about that is before anybody comes in the course, they get the online e-learning. Yeah. So until, until you've completed that, which is uh, CPD verifiable or you get CE points, uh, you cannot attend our courses. So you have to work okay, Where for, do they find your courses? At face.co.uk? Yeah, it comes off face the website. UK. Yeah, just onto the yeah. training panel. And what happens if they type in faceuk.com? Uh, uh, I don't think that'll take you anywhere. I don't know where that goes. Yeah, .com. <laughs> doesn't come to us. It's not available to us, but no one else has it either. Okay, so let, let, let's back up to first why. So you're you're explaining to people how to drive from Glasgow to London. Um, ex first, explain why a dentist would want to get into Botox and Dermafills, and, and and also explain the difference between Botox and Dermafills. Why why is so can you explain both of those well, questions? So yeah, Botox is a neuromodulator, so it prevents the release of acetylcholine. It softens muscle expression effectively, whereas a filler is to plump up the tissue to restore volume that's been lost by aging or to enhance a feature like the lips. So they're completely different. They work in completely different ways. So do you, does everyone that gets Botox get derma filler, or do are it's, a, it's a bit of it's a bit of both. There's a lot of overlap, and you tend to use the Botox to get longer lasting results from the filler, for example. Um, but I think a lot of dentists do Botox in isolation because that's what they learn to do, and they stick with what they've learned on that one day course. Whereas we're trying to look at it holistically and treat the face holistically rather than just doing one procedure. 
I do think it's a fantastic treatment though to provide in combination with dental treatments such as a smile makeover, maybe some veneers, some orthodontics, some whitening, then to have your lips enhanced uh, or just to relax the um, wrinkles or expressions on your face. One thing we try to stay away from is giving our patients the frozen look. I'll always tell my patients a face that cannot move is a mask and so things are changing now in the, in the, the facial aesthetics realm. We're trying to get more natural results and stay away from making people look fake. So I assume this is all women, all elder women? You'd be surprised. Um, it's, a, it's a mix really, starting from about maybe 21 years old, um, females and males, all the way through into sort of late 60s. So why would a 21 year old get Botox and Dermapils? It's like it's the pressure of society, isn't it? Yeah. People wanna, wanna have bigger lips and no wrinkles and smooth skin, so it's beauty. It's effectively what's driving it. Society's so, changed. What, what, so, um, what percent is it boy versus a girl? Start with there. I'd say it's about, in the general industry, it's about 80-20, maybe 85-15 for our patients. I'd Certainly. say it's about, it's about the same. I'd agree. So it's 85-15? It's, it's, female, it's female dominated. It's female. And what yeah. would be the, the sweet spot on age on these women and men? I mean, there might be a 21-year-old, but... Where is the majority of those women and men? Because I, what I'm trying to talk about is, is um, these dentists that you're talking to, in America, they, they each already have about 1,850 patients. Mm -hmm. So they got about 1,850 patients. So they're trying to think in their walnut brain, which, which, which patient are you talking about? Okay, there might be one 21-year-old, but is it mostly 60-year-old? Yeah, I'd say that it tends, tends to be from 30 to about 55 is the age bracket and female. That's the main... That's the main Female demographic. Yeah. And yeah. are these, uh, they just finished their first divorce and they're trying to fix themselves up? <laughs> back on the, back on the market. There's a, there's a mixture. There's a mixture. I think um, it really depends on the city you're in and the demographic that's there. For us, we do see a fair number of younger patients, don't we? So, but maybe per perhaps because we're younger guys ourselves, that's the type of patient that we're attracting. It all depends on your practice. So. So the one thing um, I like about it is um, if the NHS is setting your fees on a cleaning or an x-ray or a filling, you might be getting uh, remunerated your break-even fee. I mean, you might be doing a filling or a root canal and not even making a, a 10 pence on it. And what I like about implants or Invisalign or Botox is you, you can charge your fee. The NHS is not setting your fee no. on Botox or Dermapil. It's not a treatment covered by the National Health Service. And that's a blessing. Absolutely. Yep. We're both lucky we don't work on the National Health Service, so... You don't even participate? No, no. we don't. Not anymore. Well, congratulations. <laughs> well, we'll talk about, your, talk about your journey. But we, ha we have done it, and we've been there, and we think it's important to contribute. Okay, okay but that, that, that's career. the most stressful thing I'd like to talk about, because most people, um, that's the safety. I mean, the, the government's mm. tit. To, to be latched onto the government's tit is the safety meal. How, talk about your journey of starting with NHS and getting off that safety valve. I think it's very easy when you, when you first graduate, it's great because you're working on the health service, you're being paid to do that and you feel like you're helping people um, and you get really good experience for doing so. But it can be quite easy to continue on that treadmill and not take a step off and before you know it, you're churning out work after work and you're not really doing what you want to be doing. And, you just have to be brave to take a step off and obviously have the right opportunity to do so. And that's what we've both had as an opportunity to work in a practice that's purely private. So um, it's I'd courage agree. really, isn't I it? Think, I think if you were to describe it maybe as a, a restaurant menu, the health service menu is very short and concise. There's very few things really that you can do. And I feel very restricted with that menu. Yeah. Whereas when you have say a private menu, the list of treatments which become available to you are they're vast there are so many of them um, and for me that just gives me much more job satisfaction at the end of the day i think yeah, it, yeah. sorry no. now you're in glasgow yes is it glasgow 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 <laughs> glasgow <laughs> nearly it, now is that the capital of scotland or is that edinburgh no edinburgh is the capital glasgow is the biggest city it's not the capital so glasgow is the biggest city edinburgh is the capital and you're in london Yes. Downtown London or, or something? Uh, a mixture, yes. Yeah, central London and then just slightly outside as well. So I guess, I guess the, the first thing, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to guess what the homies are thinking. And 
<laughs> so um, half of those guys would be in rural America. Do you think this is more a big city thing in the million city of Glasgow and then and then what is London? Ten million people? Um, what is London's population nowadays? It's I think it's maybe it's about that, yeah. More, yeah. No, about ten million. Yeah, about so that, yeah. is it do you think this is something that might be happening in a small rural well, town of three thousand in middle America? Absolutely. You know, these people are still exposed to the social media um, and the general media that we see um, even in the big cities. So the demand I think will still be there as well. Um, I come from a very small place in Ireland, and um, this trade's rife. It's very, very busy. So you were born in Ireland? Yes. Are you drinking right now? <laughs> I'm he was about five minutes ago. <laughs> currently so drunk. I'm fighting against America. I'm 100% <laughs> Irish, and in America, we have one celebration, St. Patrick's Day. So the whole country just gets drunk. I, mean, I think you guys celebrate St. Patrick's more than the Irish celebrate St. Patrick's. That's <laughs> quite funny. It's a strange um, one. <laughs> it was the biggest wave of people for the first. So from 1860, uh, the potato famine, it was the largest wave and 14% of Americans were Irish. That's right. And we just got past, um, African Americans are 13%, Irish are 14%. Wow. And we just got passed <laughs> um, by Latinos last year. So now the wave of uh, Mexican immigration just hit 15%. So it was actually the largest wave of people. So were I a minority. So it's, it's <laughs> funny though, because you know, you, you know, it's the only holiday where in America, I mean, you don't celebrate Christmas or Thanksgiving or Easter by well, everyone getting drunk. Yeah, but well, on St. Patrick's Day, I, everyone just goes down and gets completely shit-faced. So where I, where I live, when I open up my bedroom window at home, um, there's a mountain just in front of us, and it's the base of a volcano, um, and that's where St. Patrick uh, was a shepherd. He stayed on that little mountain, Slemish. And do you know why he used the three-leaf clover? Um, I would imagine that was to help, to help drive the snakes away. <laughs> do you know why he's associated with three-leaf clover? Oh, you're putting me on the spot now. That was his, Shame that on was you. His, that was I'm his, still drunk. <laughs> that was his teaching prop to teach the Holy Trinity and the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. That was his own. Wow. So you know that a doctor um, is Latin word from docere, meaning to teach. Teacher, yeah. And a great doctor is a great teacher. And it's interesting how his work handed down um, generations of oral passing down orally. Um, by his great teaching prop of a three-leaf clover. So and it was it was very memorable. Dr. St. Patrick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're onto something there. So, <laughs> so, uh, so 82% of American dentists have signed up for these discount fee plans called PPOs, preferred provider organizations where they sign up and they're getting paid. It's, it's a 40% off sale. And a lot of them are doing this in a grind and they're doing fillings and cleanings for free. And some of them are losing money, don't even know it. And you guys were brave guys that said the hell with that stuff. I'm going to do a private practice, do Botox. What would you, what would you tell us someone that says, you know, I'm just kind of scared. Um, how, how much money is going to cost me to go to your website and watch all these videos and, and get trained? What, what kind of a commitment is that? And, and do you think, do you think, this could be like 1% of my practice? Or are you thinking this could be 5% of my practice? Are you I telling think, me, I mean, obviously, I know my that whole practice can't be Botox. We, we know a number of dentists who have now left dentistry to do facial aesthetics, and that's all they do. Full time. We know a number of dentists that it makes up probably 40% of their turnover. So the numbers are there, the money is good, if that's what you want to do. But some people just dabble in it as well and only do, you know, the patients that they've been seeing for five years, you know, talk, a couple talk of about, months. Talk about, uh, and by the way, turnover is uh, British for, for sales. I, I love the word. They're, they're <laughs> so we'll say revenue and they'll revenue, say turnover. Yeah. Um, but talk about what I'm going to find on your website, how long's the videos. And, and, and by the way, if you're thinking, um, I can go online and do his videos, but I don't want to fly. All the way to London for the hands-on course. Two things on that. Trust me, you want to freaking fly to London. <laughs> it is the coolest city. I mean, we can come to to Phoenix if you want us to do that. Well, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Would you have us? Uh, absolutely. We there um, you go. We put on courses in America all the time. We especially in Phoenix where I I live. We put on a uh, we call it a we have an annual meeting. Um, this year, um, every April we have our annual meeting, and this year will be our fifteenth annual town meeting. Fantastic. Um, and then we also put on meetings throughout the year. The, if you're thinking about um, wanting to lecture at the townie meeting or put on a course, you can go to townymeeting.com. And the townie is, 
It was Dental Town, but they just called themselves Townies. We didn't start that, they did. The person who's in charge of, if you want to come down for my course, um, is Marie at foranmedia.com. Okay. So Marie at foranmedia.com. Okay, get back. And if you want to put the course on Dental Town, uh, there's two Howards. So I'm Howard at Dental Town. But we have another Howard, um, I'm Howard Foran, he's Howard Goldstein. So he goes by Hogo for Howard Goldstein. He's Hogo at Dental Town. But if you want to put the didactic course online, you would call Hogo at Dental Town. Or if you just go to Dental Town and go to the contact us, it has everybody's there. But Absolutely. Yeah, we, we would we'll love get some stuff up. Down. Yep, for sure. That would be great. Talking uh, about the online material. Yeah, talk so, about the online. So it's really, it's, we break down every treatment into the areas when we're talking about botulinum toxin treatments, neuromodulation. Um, and we talk you through the variances in people, muscle types that you get, and then we show videos on that taking you from uh, recombination of the toxin, that means mixing it with the saline, all the way through to injecting and managing your patients. Um, and it's short little snippets of about maybe 30 seconds to a minute long. Um, and it just means if you've been on the course and you forget something, and that's something that we come across quite often is people losing the confidence to get out there and get started. They can go back online, reflect, you have lifelong access to this, and we're constantly updating it with new videos. We're always trying out new materials coming into the field as well. Yeah. And it keeps you really in the loop. And where do you buy the botulism from? Oh, so it's, it's a PON, prescription only medication. So you need to get it from the pharmacy. You have to actually write a prescription for it. So the dentist writes the prescription? Yeah. For it? Yeah. Same with the dermal fillers. Um, it's not prescription only, though. It's, an, um, it's a medical, medically marked material. So you can technically buy it over the counter, but you can also prescribe it as well. I would think if I got started in this, um, if it's mostly women, I would start first marketing just to blind women. <laughs> so no matter what happened, you know, they, they <laughs> did you start with only blind women? We call it, what would you say, not blind? You know, there's, there's a few ways to Visually challenged. It. You could. <laughs> visually challenged. Visually challenged. You, um, I often suggest to delegates to start on friends and family members because I think it's important to see the before and after results. Whenever you, you place some toxin into someone's forehead, for example, it takes 10 to 14 days for that to kick in and have its effect. Whereas with dermal filler, it's an immediate result. So with dermal filler, you can almost see what you've done straight away. With botulinum toxin, it takes a little bit of time. Okay, And not everybody's the same. Our muscles of different um, strength, different sizes. And so if you use a smaller dose than someone, you can get less of an effect, but quite often that could be quite nice depending on your desired outcome. So um, friends and family, so you can stay in close contact and review them. And I think you better, you get a much better grasp over the treatment itself. I am, when I started, um, when I started uh, veneers, I went to, uh, way back in the day, I went to the Las Vegas Institute of Cosmetic Industry. I think it was like the first class that was like early nineties, you know, like 94 or something like that. And what I did is I went around to, uh, I went to a lot of practice. So I went around to all the beauty salons and I told the lady at the beauty salon who has the counter up the front that if you, I'll do your veneers for free. If you'd put your before and after picture and done by Howard Ferran in this shopping center at today's dental, my phone number. And I think I went to about six different ones and six for six took it off. I mean, took it. They're like, hell yeah, I want veneers. <laughs> and it was great practice for me. The beauticians seemed to be better looking women on average anyway. They were fun cases. They were into hair and nails and beauty. But I, I could see a marketing going around to uh, people doing Manny Petties, um, you know, the Vietnamese nail salons, um, um, hair salons. I, I, I would see that working. I think. We've previously, for marketing, tried, you know, the tanning salons, the beauty salons, these type of places where that tends to be the same clientele that will be looking for aesthetic treatments anyway, so it works quite well. Yeah. And then you've um, got word of mouth to then spread nicely. I find advertising. Yeah, word of mouth for me has been the, the most popular way to get new patients because um, I think if you pick up a leaflet or a flyer, yes, it gets your name out there, but you still have to create trust. You know, at the end of the day, this is someone's face that you're treating. Um, and there's with so many things could potentially go wrong. And I think with maybe so much bad press that it's had over the past few years, you have got to earn that trust. So word of mouth is fantastic in this game. So the people that we train is always that you should start slowly. You'll have two or three people, could be family, could be close friends. 
do a really good job on them, look after them really well, and then they'll tell two or three people and it will grow nicely. And if you look after the people that you've got within six months, you have a nice list and it will just grow at a good rate rather than yeah. advertising online or you know doing the, the typical things that people do. And then another point I suppose worth mentioning would be retention of patients. Um, with this, talks and treatments generally they last for three to four months. So you could be looking at up to three, four times per year the patient visits you for neuromodulation treatments. Um, dermal fillers is anything from six months through to 12 months uh, before the body breaks down the hyaluronic acid that you place in the face. Um, and again, that's maybe a yearly retention fee you could be looking at. So with some of our patients, uh, we have them on a monthly uh, payment plan, something like um, £60, which would be like $120 per month they pay. Um, and that's them to, we, we call it unlimited Botox, as an example. Um, and truthfully, they only come in three times a year for a little bit of top-ups. So it works really well. So do you, is that a, um, an automatic uh, debit on their credit card? I mean, is this a deal where you get this their is credit a, card? This is an in-house deal. That but we, but we do you automatically ding their credit card every month on the first day of the month? Um, yeah. Yeah, that is some of the fastest way to build a huge business. When, when, you, when you go study like the gym membership, they they get you to where you sign a membership where every month they're going to ding your credit card for a certain amount and the average person is they're they're all gone by after nine months but but over a third 30 to 40 percent are never organized to call up and cancel this automatic billing every month and they just keep getting dinged on average like almost over two years since they ever went last to the gym so whenever you can get a credit card annuity plan set up it is just pie in the sky money. they will not miss an appointment so botox they're they're really phone rings i'd say more than half the phone calls are for botox in this practice wow it's it's busy okay so so talk about the um um the money's the answer what's the question how much does this stuff cost how much are you charging to inject it and how long is the appointment? I mean, they all know in America, a root canal is a thousand bucks and it's gonna take you an hour. Is this a thousand bucks? Does it take an hour? Talk, talk, talk about the mechanics of the- Botox is, is in units, so you can either have 100 units or 50 units, depending on the size of the vial. And typically per patient, you would use about 50 units on one person. So that would cost you 60 pounds which is like a hundred dollars maybe is that right but 120 dollars yeah something like that dollars. maybe well depending on the the referendum from the eu that might be a bit more expensive now <laughs> <laughs> and you're, you're charging <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> four to five times what you're buying the vial for so but okay, so $500 i'd say for five hundred dollars kind okay, of for an average treatment our appointments are about 20 minutes you could shorten it and those it doesn't take long to do it but you want to go through your consent your photographs you know spend a bit of time with the patient that's what brings them back if you show them some care if they're in and out the door and it feels rushed and rough they don't like it so they don't come back it's just no service so women, women like special. trust and the only re the way they're going to trust you if they feel that you're sincere so learning how to fake sincerity is the most important <laughs> thing you can learn. Yeah, yeah. I think where a lot of people make mistakes, again, going back to botulinum toxin, is they, um, and we, we try to emphasize this throughout our courses, is that not everybody's the same. So if you were to come and see me, I would give you a different treatment plan to Ryan, to Andrew. Um, and so if you create unique treatment plans and you make your patient understand that, they're going to come back because it's a much better service. They're getting the right treatment. By the way, I asked him if I was a candidate. He said I was only a candidate to be taken to a vet and be put down. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> would, would you would you put me down with botulism? Is that what you would you would uh, euthanize me well, with? Well, we'd need more than a hundred units. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what? Do you, so just just plain devil's advocate, not to be rude or anything like that. But what do you what do you say to some dentists out there saying, dude, that's a that botulism. That's uh, it wouldn't be smart to inject it, that into a human. That, 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 that kills people. It's used, it was first used therapeutically for different disorders. Um, cervical, cervical dystonia, dystonia for one, yeah, or like bladder spasms. So it's used by doctors to help people. It can be used to treat migraines, for example. And all of the studies of it show that there's not any systemic effects on the body. Let's relate it back to fluoride, one of the most toxic substances to the human body. And yeah. we brush our teeth with it every single day. There you yeah. go. What's well, a little bit of uh, botulinum toxin? Yeah. 
and it is the the minutest amount as well that you're using. So, so back to the details of your website. Um, how much is the e-learning platform? How, how long? Be- because we're still building it, so we've been established for about eighteen months now, um, and it's something that we're still building. So we're giving it quite cheap just now, and we're giving a loyalty with that. So you have a lifetime membership to the right. online. So it's one hundred and fifty pounds, which is about three hundred dollars just now. That's just for the online side of things. But as we add to it, the price will, of course, go up yeah. as videos and the but content right now, gets better. the $300 US, what, what, how long is the online visit? It, it, so we've got 15 hours of 15 hours of reading material and CPD. So that's verifiable. That's with, for botulinum toxin and then a separate 15 hour course for dermal fillers. So it's very extensive. So, you've got so thir- it's two 30 hours. 15 hour courses and that 15 hours of video or 15 hours of video and reading? Both. A combination sure of both. So but, reading and video? Yep. And the back, so the video complements the reading. So it might say, here's the technique. And then how often are your hands-on courses? They're twice a month just now, one in Glasgow, one in London. And would you need to, could you do this from just the online video? Or do you need to see a live? You need the hands-on experience, particularly when it comes to dermal filler treatments. Because And by the way, I just want to say about uh, going to London, like Phoenix to London is a nonstop flight at uh, nine hours and nine and a half hours. Um, If you're in, uh, in America, by the way, um, three out of four Americans live east of the Mississippi River. Um, two out of three Americans live within 500 miles of where the pilgrims first landed in Plymouth Rock. So within 500 miles of Plymouth Rock, like Boston, New York, Philadelphia, two out of three. So you can fly nonstop to London in six and a half hours. So it's just a jump skim. It's actually, when I'm in Phoenix, I mean, I'm in New York, it's five and a half hours to go from New York to Phoenix, five and a half hours. Or if I go the other way, it's only six hours to New York, so New, I mean to London. So New York's like the halfway mark. It's a small place this world, isn't I it? I know, so I'm telling you, well, uh, not, not to dog on Glasgow, <laughs> I didn't mean to, to pitch London, but not Glasgow, well, but. If, any, I, I if anybody think, makes it over from America, we'll get you a cup of tea with the queen. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'm telling you, I think what's interesting yeah. for me is um, uh, Phoenix, there was pretty much no people living there before they invented the air conditioner. Cause like this week, it's been 120 all week. So basically, no one really lived there, hardly anyone. Um, it was a lot of Indian tribes, some Mexicans from, you know, held over. And then after World War II, they had invented the commercial air conditioner, and there was 50,000 people in Phoenix. Now there's 4 million. So the air conditioner, so the point being is there's nothing in my town that's over 65 years old, you know, but then you walk around glasgow and see like 1800s so. i know i mean you walk around europe and you just see stuff two three it's four beautiful, isn't it? sometimes a thousand two that i mean god we were in paris i mean it's just so cool uh, the, well, I, I call this the old world yeah because phoenix i mean it's it's 65 years old as far as construction <laughs> you know all you're going to find is 65 year old mcdonald's, McDonald's. and walmart's <laughs> well that that's the extent of our culture there's um uh, the famous um, artist here called Rennie McIntosh. Um, so if anybody from America does decide to come over, um, Rennie McIntosh um, is famous for creating the Art Deco. Um, how would you describe it? Genre of art. And a lot yeah, of the, the buildings piece. in the city are, are based on Art Deco designs. Right on. So, um, so if they flew over your hands-on course, talk about that. Is it a one day, two days? It's two or days. Are they learn? It's two days. It's two days. It's first days on the botulinum talks. Where is it at? What hotel do they stay? Um, uh, you're spot for they... choice, either city. If you go to London, there's thousands of Everywhere. hotels. Yeah. If you go to Glasgow, there's hundreds of hotels. And they're all, they're all fantastic. They do great breakfast. Um, but getting back to the courses, um, the first, say, hour and a half is just a quick recap of things for us to have a peer-to-peer discussion about treatments. And then we spend um, at least seven hours of that day actually treating patients back-to-back. Um, with the aim at the end of the day for the delegates then to come and take over, um, meet and greet the patients, get consent, medical history, and formulate the most appropriate treatment plan. And that's then overseen by Andrew and I to make sure things are going smoothly. And how much is that course? Um, London in is 1250 Yeah, it's about 1250 in London. And that's for the weekend, both and, days. Which we think is a pretty good price. Well, that'd be, that'd be yeah. cheaper than the airline ticket. 
Yeah, which includes the online learning. Um, and then also in Glasgow, it's about um, 990, something like that. Nice. So our, our mission here is just to, to lift, um, lift this discipline. The standards and of the profession. Sta- yeah. Lift the standards and promote excellence. And facial and medical for people aesthetics. not to feel isolated, for people to feel supported. Well, you know, one own. one thing you might, um, one great marketing thing, if you've already got all that content, if you already got thirty hours of content on your site, yeah, it was a lot of work. <laughs> you ought to you ought to roll out the first hour on Dental Town, yeah, so that two hundred seventeen thousand dentists can see it every time they're scrolling through the online see. Then if they take that first hour, and then when you're done, you say, if you want twenty nine more hours of this, switch over yeah. to. Uh, face.co.uk yep. this was an introductory I, 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 again I, I call that deconstructing the sales process So we'd the, be happy to supply that Yeah. yeah the, the biggest asset the average American will ever own is their house and one of the best financial decisions they can ever do is instead of just living in your house and dying and then give it to your kids and then they just sell it and do drugs with all the money <laughs> uh, uh, you sit there and you do a reverse annuity where you sell your house to a bank and then they try to guess how old you're going to live and then they give you a monthly payment. So they're thinking, okay, you're 75. We think you'll be dead by 83. So we say, give us the title of your house. We'll give you 1500 a month till you die. Well, if you live to be 103, the bank lost everything on the house and you, 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 know, you won the lottery. Mm. Uh, if you die the next day, the bank throws a party and they're like, hey, we won. And uh, so you can't explain that in a one minute commercial. No. So what they do is the, the one minute commercial just says, you know, you can sell, you know, we're they're just trying to get you to go online and watch no. the hour deal so that they're on the TV commercial. Saying, we can't explain this in 60 seconds. So the whole deal is go to our website and watch this course. Then when you go to the website, the whole deal is, well, we can't tell you how much your annuity is until you give us the address of your house and tell us how old you are. And then, so then the whole deal is there is to get you to call and say, I'm Grandma Mary and this is my address and I'm 84 years old. And then you get the number and that's the qualified lead. So the, the ad on TV might go to a million and then maybe only a hundred will go online. And of them only 10 will call the number and of those five get annuity and that's the cash cow where they just mm. turn. So I would deconstruct sales process. So, you know, um, maybe an hour online will get them to go to your course to do 30 hours online. Yeah. yeah. And then maybe 30 hours online will get them to jump over the pond yep. and see you hands on. Come and see us. And if you want to do a course in America, email Marie, Marie Leland, Marie at dentaltown.com. Mm-hmm. Right and maybe, uh, you know, do that. For sure. Sounds good. For sure. Absolutely. We'll we'll make sure it's an hour of some of the best material. Right on. Some cool videos. And I know this will be hard for you, but during that one hour, just don't drink for that one hour. I know you're a <sighs> Irish and it's St. Patty's Day. I'm getting the shakes. <laughs> <laughs> so why do, you, why do you think the Americans celebrate the Irish St. Patrick's Day with just a day of drinking? Where, where does that actually come from? I mean, they don't do that at Christmas. Imagine Christmas. We, Everybody we just, just gets drunk right? all day. What's that? Thanksgiving's a big... Thanksgiving is a huge one, but not, not, <laughs> not as big as St. Patty's. Thanksgiving's more eating. Right, okay. But thanks, but man, when you tell America and we're celebrating the Irish, it's St. Patrick's Day, it just drink and sun up to sundown. And I, I got to ask the Irish man, why is that? It's just it's when you're out with your friends, there's a lot of unity there, people you don't get to see very often, lots of family and friends, and back home, um, we just like to drink. Yeah. It's involved in every occasion, even at a funeral. There's people drinking. So I got, I got to tell you, you brought up funeral. I got, I got to tell you this. Okay. This is, this is what, what was cool about the Irish. So when I was little, and my family's Irish, um, when you go to an Irish wake, they are so Catholic, they are so religious that they think, <laughs> you know, when you go to a Protestant deal, the Protestants are like, yeah, we believe in heaven. Wink, wink, wink. Not really, because when you die, they're all crying and sad or whatever. But the Irish believe it so much, they think he's in heaven. We're, we're the poor bastards down here. And when I was little, the Irish wakes, you would go there and they would, everybody would throw a big party. They would drink and they would get so trashed. And then they would tell the funniest stories about the dead guy in the casket. I remember he was 18 years old. He lost his clothes. He came home naked, you know, and it would just... 
And it was all the celebrations. And I remember talking to my grandma one time, and I remember saying to her, I said, well, how come no one said he's died? And he said, Howie, he's in heaven. Like, yeah. drink up. Yeah. This is great. And we were, and we, I was with my grandma, and we were in a bar, and we were playing shuffleboard in Parsons, Kansas, and there were 50 Catholic Irish people celebrating that the guy two doors down died. And I'm like, I mean, man, because that, that's true to your faith. I mean, they, they so, and, and the only um, sadness was that they're the poor bastards still stuck on earth on Kansas <laughs> and their, their buddy is in, in heaven. And it's 120 degrees outside. So, so do they still, <laughs> are Irish wakes yes. still like that? Oh yeah, absolutely. So um, explain to Irish wake, because in America, a funeral is crying, bawling, somber. The Irish just don't do it that way. I mean, it, as soon as the tragic event happens, there's, a, there's obviously some of that comes along with it, but then um, the body gets taken home. They bring the actual body back to the house. Um, it usually gets put into maybe one of the second rooms, like the lounge or something. And um, you normally get the women in the kitchen making tea, coffee sandwiches, uh, and then starting to provide copious amounts of alcohol. Um, and then you get, you know, uh, cousins, relatives, neighbors, they all start to pour into the house. People get talking, jokes start going, people are eating cake. It's great. <laughs> it's a celebration of the person's life as opposed yeah, to... It is. And part of that is, is keeping their memory alive. You know, that's what keeps the person alive and helps you to go over the, the misfortune of their death. I think yeah, the, the person as well, whoever you've lost, wouldn't want you to be upset and mourning exactly. over, over their, your loss. So I can't believe we're talking about funerals uh, <laughs> <laughs> on a dental time interview. <laughs> so I think it's a big part of the show because we, we do podcasts from Tokyo and Singapore. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, you're right behind the Scotland flag. And I was telling him on the other deal that um, a lot of Americans don't know that on the Union Jack, the Scotland flag. That's right. Yeah, three it's so England is the Georges <coughs> Cross, and then obviously you have the Salt Tower behind it. Yeah, that's what makes obviously up. Obviously, what? So you, you have this is St George's Cross here, the red one. That's St George's Cross. Yep. The so red that's, flag, the, that's, that's the that's the English. English. Yep. And then the Salt Tower is the Salt Tower. Salt Tower. Salt Tower. Yep. Is the Scottish one. So that's the Scottish one, which is the so small and then S O L T A I R E. And what is soul tire? That's almost in harmony. It's, it's, it's this. That's the soul tire. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. Scotland. And then you see here. That's the William Wallace flag, as you would call it. William the Wallace. Northern Irish one is this. It's the, um, the, red. the red one. And that's, that's the Ulster flag. And normally it has a hand just in the very center. And you go, it's called the red hand of Ulster. Um, but obviously a red hand wouldn't have looked so good here. So they, they decided not to put it in. And, um, now it's called the Union Jack, but that's only if it's on a ship, right? If it's on land. It's called it's a Union Jack. Isn't that technically have to be on a ship? Um, no, I think you you're talking about um, the Australian flags. I think. No, maybe. Anyway, we're. I know. I know what you're coffee. talking about. <laughs> no, I, I think. Um, I think they love. Uh, I think my dentists back in America love meeting dentists from around the world, <laughs> learning about their flags. Or I think it's one of our favorite things, isn't it? Being able to travel the world and combine it with so where have dentistry. We been in the world to learning about this. Uh, we've been to Canada. We've been to well, all around Europe. Um, unfortunately, yeah. never Asia. That's a list, Asia's probably the next but stop. Mainly Europe because that's the short flight and yeah, Paris, a of, Monaco. A lot of similarities between places. Europe and the UK. Monaco is French, right? Yeah. No, well, well it's, speak it's a separate it's country. Yeah. Monaco. Oh, uh, Monaco. Monaco is its own country. Yeah, but it's at the very bottom of France. It's on the south coast, beside Nice. Yeah. So Monaco and Morocco both speak French. Um, yeah, but Morocco, Morocco is Africa. part of Africa. Right. It's the north uh, west coast of Africa. But Monaco is a separate country or a part of France? It's its own republic. Is it a republic or? Yeah, it's owned by the the king of Monaco. So, are there any cultures that like uh, Botox and dermatology better? I mean, like, is it more do more French women do it than Germans, or more English than Irish, or is there any? any I'd say it's quite big in Eastern Europe. As yeah. opposed to Latin Europe or, you know, Spain or mm -hmm. any of the Mediterranean countries, more Eastern it's Europe. Russia, it's very big. We have um, a lot of friends that practice in Asia and um, they are mega, mega busy out there. Really? So more mega. Eastern Europe? Yeah. When you say Eastern Europe, what do you think? Poland, Croatia, Russia? What, what's Eastern Europe to you? Yeah, so exactly. Um, 
Germany, Poland, Croatia, where else? So you consider Germany like Eastern Slovakia, Europe? these type of countries. Do you consider Germany Eastern Europe? Mm, it's kind of it's mid Europe, isn't it? Really? Yeah. What do you? But you, so so it's big. No, it's Germany's big, more. Big in Germany. No, maybe not Germany then. Sorry. So like Poland, Slovakia, um, where the Czech Republic, these type of places. And Russia. Yeah, Russia's big into its aesthetics as well. Yeah, but every every country has. Its, I was like, I was yeah. amazed. I mean, I've been to all these. I've been to all these countries several times. I can't, I can't think of a European country I've never been to at least three times. And um, I was I was amazed the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time in uh, Poland, how into cosmetics Polish women were. I mean, there's a tanning salon on every corner. They call them the stomatologia. Or what? What is the word for sun? Uh, is it In stoma? Polish, I, I think I, no, sto, no. What, whatever, whatever the word is for uh, uh, sun tanning or whatever. Um, but I mean, there's one on every corner. I it's mean, they were no sunshine, but like here. Yeah, but they were they were all into uh, tanning hair salons. I mean, I I vividly remember and always think of Poland as being extra cosmetic revolution we'll take you down into the back streets of glasgow and uh show you all the talent salons <laughs> there's hundreds hundreds of what tanning salons oh loads of them here yeah Be- because it's it's dark mm. it's dark a lot in the winter yeah there's a lack of oh, well lack it, of not not just in the winter pretty much year well, round okay so i'm gonna have <laughs> one last question i think you guys have covered this subject good uh what one one last question um you guys have been out of school how many years Three years. Three. Three years. Okay. So people who do podcasting are more likely to be 30 and under than, say, my age, 50 and over. Okay. Yeah. Um, a lot of those guys, uh, they come out of school, they got a lot of student loan debt, and they're saying, okay, and I know what they're thinking. They're thinking, okay, here, here's, here, here's what you're competing with. So you're telling me to learn Botox. Invisalign's telling me to learn Invisalign. Noble BioCare is telling me to learn implants. Uh, so there, there's, I'm overwhelmed. I'm, I'm supposed to learn Botox, Invisalign, sleep apnea, surgically placed implants, CAD CAM dentistry. God dang it. There's only 24 hours in a day. Where does it stop? So where does it stop? So, so my question to this is, I, I just got out of school a year ago. Um, tell me why I should learn Botox instead of Invisalign, sleep apnea, surgical okay. implants so, cad can you know every, everything that's that's a great great question so uh, i'll just talk about my own daily practice which involves cad cam dentistry um obviously facial aesthetics uh, but i do a lot of smile makeovers as well and that's everything from say six to six veneers um or what's six to six veneers? from uh sort of first molar to first molar okay. you'd call that what like um three to 14 yeah yeah, so full mouth rehabs so we do as well. So being a central, a lateral, a canine, a bicuspid, a semi-bicuspid, a molar. Yeah. So the first molar would be six from the front midline. Yeah, yeah. so that's, that's my daily bread and butter. But on top of that is orthodontics as well. Um, everything from clear aligners to fixed braces. So if I've achieved that in three years, and I'm also able to incorporate this into it, and I think this is such a fantastic combination treatment, and it goes hand in hand, with smile makeovers, um, I think within three years that can be accomplished. So what all what what all would you recommend them to learn when they get out of school? And be- because I think you want to do what interests you the most. That's yeah. that's exactly. the thing. Because at the end of the day, it's your passion. For me, the passion isn't teeth, you know, or molars or braces. It's making someone feel good, mm-hmm. and generally that comes from them thinking they look better. Obviously, looking better is subjective. But so people come to look people better. To feel better, you should have gone to massage therapy school <laughs> and not dentistry. <laughs> we, both, we all know the power of beauty and how, you know, if you yeah. look better, you, you feel better in general. Right. So, and this is just another extension of that. Why stop at the teeth when you have the knowledge of the anatomy and the physiology to then go on and treat everything else that encompasses a smile? Because at the end of the day, it's a smile that you're treating. So why not okay, so, frame so, it with again, lips, add Botox? What, what is... What is worth learning and what it, what is not worth learning? I mean, the, the, uh, that whole menu I said of all those things. What do you think is worth them learning when they okay. get? Okay, okay. So I we, think it's what you're. Most, most Americans they always get out of dental school and they always complain about what they didn't learn in dental school. Okay. So yeah. They see all these postgraduate deals. What what's worth the return on investment? Your your patients now almost expect this from you. Years ago, when I first started this, it was. 
Oh, I didn't know dentists did Botox or filler, and now it's patients are just actively booking in, having never met me before, expecting me to provide these treatments. I think you mean for a young dentist, which out of everything they can do, what should they put their time and their money into? Right, right. I think that Invisalign is great. Um, there's not a massive investment, and you can quickly make your investment back on the mm -hmm. course by treating a few patients. Botox is the same, you pay for the course, and then a few patients later, you've paid that course off, if that makes sense. But ultimately, it comes down to working within your limits and working on what you're passionate about. I mean, for me, why I enjoy ortho and facial aesthetics is because of their minimal invasiveness. Yeah. And when you say orthodontics, what does that mean? Does that mean short-term ortho? Does that mean Invisalign, clear liners? Does that mean hard braces? All of, all of it. For, for all of, all of any, it. Any orthodontics you do, obviously your main aims are stability, function, aesthetics. So it doesn't matter if it's short-term, medium-term, long-term. You've got a goal and you've got a way of doing it, i.e. brackets and wire or i.e. Invisalign, and you set about to do that, it doesn't matter. Orthodontics is orthodontics. Where a specialist comes in is when you're out with your limits, like a surgical case or severe crowding, you know. Would you agree? Absolutely. What do you think, Howard, if we're going to start asking you questions now, <laughs> of now young times. dentists? So you're sitting in your chair, you're looking at us, three years qualified, and I've just told you I'm doing CAD CAM, uh, orthodontics, facial aesthetics, fill my free habs. What do you think about that? I, 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 I think it's, it's awesome. I mean, I, I've uh, been scouting talent for 30 years. Guys like you that come out of the gate, you're passionate, you go for it. I mean, you'll be the 4,000 pound girl in no time um, because you... Um, stay true to yourself. You you even said, you know, what should you do? Do what you want to do. Stay true to yourself. What's what's fun? What's passionate? Being on a uh, insurance assembly line, doing low cost fillings on patients who don't care, didn't turn you on. Making people feel better did. Um, these guys are thinking without fear, and I, I I just think it's just amazing. And I'm so glad you went just on my show. Ethics, ethics held at heart at all times. Ethics what? Ethics. We hold ethics at our heart, close to heart at all times. It's the most important thing. So me. you're saying don't vote for Clinton. <laughs> is that what I just heard you say? Don't vote. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, who is that? Trump guy again? <laughs> I just got a good golf course. Um, um, yeah. So I, I think it's, it's, I mean, you only live one time. And if you're only going to live one time, exactly. why do a job you hate? Exactly. And everybody that I think that trades time for money and all they're doing is standing at a job waiting for it to get time to go home i think they uh they end up with substance abuse unhappy kicking their dog you know you should you should go to work and play you should go to work and and like what you do and and if you like what you do the money will follow and if you hate what you do for money the depression will follow yeah i think it keeps it interesting as well for me i'm doing so many different disciplines that every day is different you never feel like you're repeating yourself nothing is repetitive and that's one way of keeping the job satisfying so, as well. so um what, what is your um i'm not saying to warranty on this course but i want to say this if a hundred people took your course how many of them actually learn it and feel like and go home and do it versus i mean is it do 20 percent say do you know what's you know great what? i didn't feel comfortable like, enough to go and inject what's, what's we got into it, wasn't it because so many people you would hear dentists doctors whatever do the course and maybe four out of 10 actually go on to do the procedures. One out of 10 treat their friends and family, but never go further than that. And the rest just never do it because they don't have the confidence. So we want to instill that confidence on the course and then support them along their journey to becoming good at it. Everyone has a different learning curve. Everyone picks things up at a different speed. There's no way you can learn everything on a one day course. That's why you need the ongoing support. It's like a dentist, you can't jump into doing five to five veneers or whatever you want to call it, you know, 10 units. We you um, have to learn how to do it and be supported along the way, so. We find that I'd say maybe at least 80% of our delegates now actively post on our support forums. Um, and what's nice is that you see them develop from being very inexperienced through to, hey guys, here's a before and after, what do you think? And you can see that pride and their passion showing through. And that's fantastic for us to see. So the Americans are all wondering, uh, you know, we, we, we took your imperial math. We're the only ones that have miles. 
But then you ditched us on the dental teeth thing. How, how come? How come we number the teeth FDA ever? Did, did, did we not copy <laughs> you FDA? right, or did you? Uh, did you? How, how did? How did it? I wonder how it got from we're both on we imperial the math. The upper right, upper left, lower left. Lower right, I we, well, I struggle counting to thirty-two. So <laughs> <laughs> now, do, you, do we do we call ours the universal system? We call ours FDI. FDI. See, Americans are funny that we call ours the universal system, and we're the only freaking country that uses. So we're it. like, we call ours the uh, the World Series in baseball, and we're the only country that watches it. <laughs> we call it football when the entire world football means soccer, and we should call the NFL soccer because the football was already taken in every other country you guys on still Earth, <laughs> and we still call it football. Americans are just kind of strange, aren't they? It, it is. America is its own world because on uh, two sides of us is an ocean, and Canada is just like California laying on its side. It's just like, I mean, it's really just another California. California and Canada are the same uh, number of people. They're both 10% of the population. They're both 38 million people, so one's laying on the left and one's wow. laying on top of us. And by the way, did you know Canadians, 90% of Canadians live within 100 miles of the U.S. border? So it's just a layer of people up there. It's another 10%. But, uh, but yeah, America is kind of its own country. It, it, they, they live in a bubble. Well, the other part of the bubble is, do you ever realize there's uh, 7 billion people, and we live on the Western Hemisphere, there's only 1 billion, and on your side is the 6 billion. So we're kind of, uh, I mean, we have an, an Atlantic Ocean and a Pacific Ocean between where five, six out of every seven people live. Yeah. So we really do live in a bubble. The other bubble I noticed was uh, Australia. They're kind of out there too. I mean, they're out there. They're, they're 15 hour flight from L LA and that world's pretty. Have you guys been there? Yeah, it's, it's uh, in the dental market there is huge. They got about 20,000 dentists and it's a very robust dental industry. They would eat this up in Sydney. You, that should be one of your. I would. I'd love to go for the surfing. Really, yeah, that's really great. Surfing because those white sharks need fed. Those great white sharks need fed every day, and you know, you'd be a great Thanksgiving meal well, for them. There's plenty of me. <laughs> <laughs> you might feed a whole family of great white sharks, so uh, they probably want you to go today. Well, um, I, I want to say this. Last question: They got out of school because most of these. I mean, most of these are, are young. They got out of school, um, they got a safe job. They're working for a dentist. And they're envious that you had the kahunas to go open your own practice. You, you have your own practice, right? No, we have this, this separate company, but we both work for other dentists. Okay, okay. Well, how do you, how do you, um, do, do you wanna own your own practice or? Yeah. How, how did you get, you know, so, so talk about the, do you wanna own your own practice and how did it take the, uh, balls to set up your your own company i think we both know that we don't want to work for someone else we want to work for ourselves and it's like your motto of you should be able to control things from the grave or you know run the practice from the grave so we wanted a passive income we wanted to have something that belonged to us so that's why we started this because it was probably lower risk than starting a dental practice and young and inexperienced if you make mistakes with this it's maybe a bit more forgiving than a dental practice than a than a million pounds of debt yeah <laughs> yeah so this was this was lower risk at the time but yeah we want to own our own dental practice we, i mean at some point. we have our own um facial aesthetics clinic um which we've got set up and the launch party of it is when pretty shortly end of july yeah this is hot off the press <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've got so we've got have our own facial aesthetics clinic um, where we only do these treatments so it's like a skincare clinic as opposed to yeah. a dental clinic so just a different take on things there's maybe less overheads involved with that as well so again less risk involved nice <laughs> was that okay, a confusing so I answer assume, last question is, I assume you're from Ireland you're the greatest band that ever lived was you 2 do you agree with that Bono um, Bono I, I don't know uh, I mean, that's my favourite band he's more of a uh, the best man that ever lived God, that's a really difficult question. <laughs> who, who, what are the other great artists that came from Ireland? Um, the, what, the course? No, musicians from Ireland. Yeah, the, they're musicians. They're musicians. Oh, the course? The course, the girls. It's the like what? Three really good looking sisters. And what's it called? The course. Spell it. 
K O R S or C O C H O R S? The chorus? Yeah, the chorus. Oh, C H O R U S, like a chorus? Yeah. The chorus. The C H O R S. Take out the U. They were really. Can you find that for me, Ryan? No. Yeah. Can we get some? And Just Ryan, what, is, what does Ryan need, mean in Ireland? In Gaelic, means that little king. Sorry. Little king. Little king. And, uh, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've got Westlife as well, the boys. You cannot forget them. Yep. What's the other ones? You tell me. I don't know. You got a few. And what's others. the greatest music band from Scotland? Music band. We got a few current ones like Paolo Martini. Who else is there? What about those those boys that sang Five Thousand Miles? Oh yeah, the Proclaimers. The Proclaimers. The Can you give? Could you give us no, a bit? Definitely, I couldn't. And I would. And I would walk yeah, five hundred. <laughs> Don't say Braveheart. I could say Braveheart. Don't know, say Braveheart. The, the old, <laughs> one. Yeah, Have you seen Train Spotting? Train Spotting. Train Spotting. They're bringing out a new one as well. Yeah. Train Spotting. That's too. just an average really? weekend here. Yeah. Train Spotting too. It's about Glasgow as well. Yeah. But uh, cool. hey guys. What's um, What's your favorite favorite movie? Independence Day. You know, I can't tell you my favorite <laughs> movie because it'll be a character assassination on my own show. I grew up with five sisters. I played Barbie dolls till I was 12. <laughs> so all my favorite shows are girly musicals. Uh, the uh, Sound of Music, uh, Fiddler's Rest, The Oklahoma. So I mean, yeah, great films. My, my sisters all <laughs> love musicals. So when we would vote what's on TV, you know, I would say, let's watch football. And five girls would say, no, let's watch Little House on the Prairie. And when I would say, so, so basically I, I grew up watching whatever five girls would watch. So yeah, I would say uh, Sound of Music, Fiddler on the Roof, every damn musical that was ever, every musical that was ever written was what I grew up on. I've got, so one, I've got uh, one last question. Are you watching Game of Thrones just now? I am watching Game of Thrones. So good. You, you, you don't like it? Oh, it's so good. It's really good. Oh, it's so good? Yeah. Interesting, interesting thing about HBO, because HBO would be like um, regular television, be like the NHS for free. And uh, HBO is like, they're just going out to people that pay more money. And uh, <laughs> Game of that. Thrones <laughs> is um, getting about 15% of their views. But that book, um, I mean, it's, it's a book they're following, and they're already through six of the eight seasons. So they've already got to realize that in two years, that's over. And they've done this in the past where they had big hits. Like, what was that mafia movie they had? Um, Boardwalk Empire. Um, there was another one, the big... Sopranos. The Sopranos. Sopranos was amazing. But, yeah. you know, but when the story's over, the story's over. So now they, I've noticed that HBO has um, doubled down on their production um, money. And they've, um, they've told their team, we, we've got to replace the Game of Thrones. That's 15% of their audience. But, they've, uh, but it, it shows you there's always a market for premium stuff. Not, not every market is going to be just low cost. I mean, look at cars. I mean, yeah, some people just take a bus, a train. Some people just take the cheapest car. But some people like a nice car. That's right. And that's what you guys are showing other dentists, that so. there's high-end stuff you can do. Invisalign. You also talked about CAD cam. Yeah. Uh, what, um, talk about that. You only got one minute. Explain CAD one cam in one minute. Uh, I started off on Cirec using Red Cam, went to Blue Cam, and now using Omnicam, and um, use it for orthodontics, scanning the arch, um, and just in house restorations, I think. So you scan the, um, the arch with the uh, yeah. Omnicam, yeah. and then you send it to a lab for clear retainers? No, send, send it to the lab for a clean check. So Invisalign, Invisalign and Omnicam, Omnicam now Yeah, they're married up now. They're linked up. You can either so use their own one. Invisalign with Omnicam? Without impressions. Nice. How long has that been available? It's just this year. Yeah, it's just, okay, just been just released. Yeah. It's a software update. So it's new, and you heard it first on Dennis Rick. <laughs> <laughs> so so, tell, so that, is, that is news uh, to me. So tell me how that works. It's, it's a little bit difficult getting used to it, scanning the full arch and, and keeping your scan on the same plane, but um, the system guides you through it. You start on the, the most posterior tooth, you scan the occlusal, then go to the buccal, lingual or palatal, um, and work your way around to different various reference points. You build up your scan, um, uh, you save the file, with the patient's details, and email it. Email to who? Uh, through to Invisalign, through CEREC Connect. Connect. Yep, and, and it means you can get a clean check back in under 24 hours. And um, 
What would be the pro or con versus taking two polyvinyl siloxane impressions and put it in a box? Time uh, is a big factor, especially in orthodontics. You know, someone could call back and say, do you know what? I've had a chance to think and maybe I can't afford this um, £5,000 treatment plan. Um, whereas if you have it sent off, the clin checks back, the patient's in your chair within days. I think if you use the iTero, which is Invisalign's own scanner, you can have a, an immediate... What would you call that? That that's pretty fantastic as well. They can do an immediate um, clean check. So they show you the result of your teeth straight on the spot instantly. Obviously, it's a prediction, but it's it's pretty nice. And is that so it's a selling point. It, yeah, that's where they well, that's where they make the aligners. That's where their yeah. their lab is to make the aligners. Yeah, I want to I want to go to Costa Rica. It's so. it's quite a if you Have see you it. Been to Costa Rica? I've seen videos of their their process, and as soon as the models are poured, the impressions a human doesn't touch it until. So Invisalign, if you're watching this, if you send me and Ryan to Costa Rica, or we stay drunk on the beach for a week, we'll film some podcasts. <laughs> can we? Deal. Ryan, will you go with me to? on that one? <laughs> 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 you want to go too? Absolutely. But um, but say guys, seriously, Ryan, did you get a picture of us for the uh, social media? <laughs> yeah, you want to use my phone? Now remember, you're looking too hot, but I'll suck in my stomach. You push yours out, Whoa. and then uh, Ryan, let me shave their heads real quick so they don't look. They're not. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for all you do. Yeah, thanks really for being on my that. show. Thanks.